And happening all new tonight, the money will soon be flowing to major initiatives in Louisville to improve lives, infrastructure, and most importantly, investing in our safety. Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for staying up just a little late with us here on The Night Team. I'm Doug Profit. The Metro Council tonight passing Mayor Craig Greenberg's budget with top dollars also going to Metro Police. WHS 1119's Taylor Woods is here now with what gets funded. Taylor? Well, Doug, more money to recruit new police officers to fill the vacancies, which still hover around 300 plus 2 million set aside for 30 new jobs that will oversee reforms and improvements outlined in the Department of Justice investigation. And that's not all. This mayor and Metro Council are wasting no time investing in ways to impact the daily violence. Not just rising crime across Metro Louisville, but violent crime. And the city is beefing up police. LMPD getting nearly $30 million more than last year for a total police budget of $222 million. We are going to improve LMPD. We're going to improve accountability. In a statement, LMPD said, quote, LMPD is grateful to members of Metro Council for their support as we continue towards our goal of providing high-level protection and safety to the public. That vote was easy since council members spent most of their time discussing the budget for TARC. We wrote a letter to TARC explaining our concern. That letter was pretty much ignored. Um, we really don't feel like we have any other recourse at this point. Um, so I want to explain my no vote. If the TARC budget had received 12 no votes, the buses would have stopped running on July 1. Council members for the budget chimed in why they needed to vote yes. If there's no bus running, there would be several people at General Electric that would not get a job. It is a need. These people would not be able to get to work, uh, medical transportation, just everything. And then the proposal by Council Member Betsy Rui to force local restaurants to cut back on the amount of plastics they use. The resolution aimed at cutting back on the waste of single-use plastics in Metro Louisville. Moving this on and adding this additional burden to restaurants it is, is unnecessary. There was debate between the council that some shared why the ordinance needed to be sent back, concerned about the impact on restaurants. So I'm in support of sending it back so that we can work together. And I think that we can have a lot more collaboration between the opposing sides than what you're hearing tonight. Overall, in the $1.1 billion budget, Metro Council President Marcus Winkler says you can see money invested in mostly every area of the city. We've got record investment in infrastructure, record investment in our parks, uh, and then also changes that, that complement our public safety strategy. In the end, the budget passed with majority of council members in favor. Mr. President, you have 23 yes votes and two abstentions. Thank you. The budget passes. Mm. Taylor Woods for the WHAS 11 night team on your side. Well, the Metro Council passed this budget with amendments. They moved some money around and added money without creating additional debt. Help for the homeless in Louisville had $3 million added to fund the Goodwill Opportunity Campus in West Louisville. Metro Parks are getting some love. $4.9 million to pour into maintenance that has been put off for years at the parks. And relief for our rocky roads. The Council putting an additional $4 million toward repaving efforts around the city. More applause for that. Well, also new tonight, the mayor addressed the controversy over the original funding for the St. Stephen Family Life Center in West Louisville. The mayor had pushed for the St. Stephen Family Life Center to receive $5 million. But then this week, Dr. Kevin Cosby of St. Stephen and the center rejected the money because of what they deemed to be sudden, unfair restrictions placed on the funds by the mayor's budget. Neighborhood leaders were also all along critical, saying the money needed to go to the California Community Center instead. Tonight, the mayor's budget passed and he was asked about the controversy. Well, I'm pleased that there's still funds in the capital budget to invest in the California Community Center and improve that uh, community center. Uh, there's also a significant investment in the Kentucky Street Master Plan to help improve the sidewalks and um, that area because California neighborhood needs the city's help. And our administration and the Metro Council tonight said we are going to invest in the California neighborhood Greenberg went on to say he's a strong supporter of Kevin Cosby and the Family Life Center and will continue to support them as Louisville mayor. A chemically contaminated abandoned site in Louisville will soon be getting new life and so will the Park Hill and Algonquin neighborhoods. The Rodea project will create affordable housing, shopping, restaurants, educational institutions and more from the nearly 17 acre abandoned site. $10 million of Metro Council approved ARP money 
are being used to transform the land. Mayor Craig Greenberg hopes that a new major development will help reverse the historical disinvestment. It has sat vacant for nearly 30 years, but the legacy of its past is still here in the abandoned building and the contaminated soil beneath our feet. The people of this neighborhood and our city deserve much better than this. The mayor says he expects a master plan for this site to be completed this year and then construction to start. We'll say goodbye to the original Louisville Police Headquarters in downtown Louisville. The city has filed for a permit to demolish the vacant building at 7th and Jefferson. It opened in 1955 and was expected to last 65 years. In March, the mayor announced plans to create a new LMPD Wellness Center and extra funding for the new LMPD headquarters at 6th and Chestnut in the vacant AT&T Corporate Headquarters building. Right now, LMPD is in the Edison building at 7th and Ormsby. And brand new in the world of Kentucky politics, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron's office is asking the FBI now to investigate campaign donations to Governor Andy Beshear's re-election campaign. The controversy has major political undertones because Cameron is challenging Bashir in this year's gubernatorial election. As you know, the donations in question were made to both the Kentucky Democratic Party and Governor Bashir's campaign. They were made in multiple people's names, but were all charged the same credit card. That credit card connected to the family and businesses of London, Kentucky's mayor, Randall Weddle. It's pay to play at its worst. Uh, you have a governor who seems to have gotten nearly $200,000 from one individual. Uh, and then on the back end of that, there was a contract awarded for $1.4 to the city of London. Again, folks are tired of pay to play politics. You're not going to have that in a Cameron administration. The 1.4 million Cameron's referencing is from transportation money distributed across the state. London, Kentucky used the money to repair and replace sidewalks along its main street. Bashir's campaign noted the award to London was part of more than $21 million in transportation funding distributed to local government statewide. Governor Bashir defending his campaign today when asked about this incident. I have uh, advised and required that my campaign follow the letter and spirit of every campaign finance law and when any situation arises to address it with transparency to do what's right and to work directly uh, with the regulators. Uh, my understanding is that the campaign has met uh, each of those requirements. The governor's campaign manager said that donors themselves alerted Bashir's campaign to the issue and expressed a desire to properly remedy the situation. They, along with the Kentucky Democratic Party, said they moved to refund more than $200,000 that they determined to exceed limits set by law. Both organizations said they notified state election finance regulators of the situation and have taken steps to prevent similar situations. Tonight, a community member remembers, tonight a community is remembering an iconic Louisville business owner, Orlando Gay, also known as Baby Ray, killed over the weekend after a boating accident. Police say he was hit by an unknown object while he was out on the Ohio River. Now tonight, family and friends spending less time in sadness, instead choosing to celebrate his memory with smiles in a big party. WHS 11 night team's Connor Steffen and photojournalist Ian Hardwit were there as the community came together to honor him. If there's only one thing to know about Orlando Gay. I guarantee you, everyone has a Bay Ray Tory, okay? Yeah, everybody probably does have a Ray story. Inside his Russell neighborhood restaurant, Double Deuces. You don't have to go far to see that. He's just a very joyous guy, yeah. Longtime Double Deuces vendor, Marcia Smith's Ray story is one of opportunity. And he allowed a lot of black businesses to come in here and also make money. Like I said, he pulled us in as brothers. James Bentley's Ray story is one of family. His five siblings have been the restaurant's regular Sunday entertainment for years. Ray pulled us in as family and we've been here ever since. Those countless lives gay touched are now doing what they can to keep his story going. That was what he was about. He was a people person and that says that speaks volumes when someone is gone and people still come. Orlando died in a boating accident Saturday here on the Ohio along River Road. His family says an object flew out of the water and hit him. At this time, we still don't know what that object is. Metro police say it happened just after 1230 in the morning and that he received the injuries while on board. Nearby boaters helped pull him from the river in this area. It really hurt me to hear, but I know he's in a better place, so that's, that's all good to me. 
Now, nearly a week later, hundreds of people poured out into the street celebrating gay and death the way he was celebrated in life. It ain't nothing but love, that girl. He leaves behind a restaurant that over the years has transformed into a community cornerstone. He was an icon. He was a giant. His younger brother, Chris, says even in his brother's death, Orlando will continue to be the foundation of this fundamental Russell neighborhood business. We're going to continue his legacy here at the Double Deuce. If this site is proof enough, we're going to keep pushing, we're going to keep doing what we've been doing as if Baby Ray was here. In his death, Orlando Baby Ray Gay's story lives on. In the Russell neighborhood, Connor Steph in the WHAS 1119 on your side. And in Louisville, we are saying welcome to new citizens of our country. A packed house at the South Central Regional Library today as federal judge David Hale of Louisville swore in several new Americans. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. For so many, this is a moment more than a decade in the making. Applicants must first apply for a green card, then live in the United States for a certain number of years, submit paperwork, complete interviews, and then take the final step, take the oath of allegiance to the United States. We talked to one man who came to Kentucky in 2008 from India with his family, the entire family telling us today they are proud to be in America. I felt very proud. I felt you know, to be part of America. Uh, I felt excited. For me, that showed me that, again, if you want something, the trophy is right there and you have to just go get it. So thank you all for doing this. Thank you for being a citizen. Thank you for picking Louisville to be your, your home. I'm the home of Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg also attended the ceremony today. 39 people from 19 countries taking the oath of allegiance to the United States.